is such a gift that in New York we have this massive home that, like the Dean said, any human being is welcome in, no matter who you are. This is where you're welcome. And today on World AIDS Day, many, many years after this epidemic began, we're celebrating the lives of the 74 million people who have lost their battle to AIDS globally. 74 million people. And every single one of those people has a story. Every single one of those people has a legacy that we have to uplift and uphold so they'll never be forgotten. I want to share a story uh, uh, about my growing up. I grew up on a farm. I've been in New York for uh, almost 15 years. I grew up in a small farm town in a very conservative part of Maryland. And uh, when I was growing up, I was different. I didn't dress like the other kids in school. I didn't play with the same toys the other kids played with. And I would come home crying almost every day, wondering why my being different got me teased and made fun of. And every single time, my mom would say, you're just like Jimmy. You're just like Jimmy, who I grew up with. And she would tell me how when she was growing up in the 1950s, Jimmy would play the damsel in distress and would make my mom play the cowboy that rescued him. <laughs> and uh, she would always say, Jimmy was the most beautiful, kind, loving person, and you're just like Jimmy. So don't listen to the kids teasing you. And uh, my mom's friend Jimmy moved to the city, much like myself, moved to the city at a time when hundreds and thousands of people were diagnosed with a disease that nobody knew about. There weren't answers to it, but the world said it was a plague against gay people, a punishment even. But Jimmy, he was no longer the damsel in distress. He was the hero that my mom and the community I'm from needed. He moved home and his parents took care of him when many people told them that they should shun him, leave him out. But they couldn't do that. Jimmy died in 1991. And I tell that story because I don't want his memory to be lost. He's one of millions of people around the world who have a story that matters, a story that's important. He probably never knew the impact he had on my mom's life. But him just being himself unapologetically opened the door for my mom to accept and love me for who I am. And built a relationship that I have with my mom where we can connect in a way that I think a lot of parents and kids aren't able to. That's his legacy. Him contracting a disease is not a punishment. It was an opportunity to educate a small conservative community about the importance of love unconditionally. The LGBTQ community lost doctors, scientists, philanthropists, historians, great people. And now around the world, this epidemic continues. We've made a lot of strides. We have drugs like PrEP that we have to make accessible to all people. We have uh, great things happening to prevent this disease. But at the same time, we have a president who is now silently dismissing members of the military who have it. We have a president's son who openly writes bigoted comments about people with HIV on Twitter and laughs about it. We have communities who aren't educated we have 28% of millennial and Gen Z people say that they won't hug somebody with HIV because they don't want to catch it. Almost 30% of these young people don't understand how you get this disease. So we've come a long way, but we have so many more strides to make. We have to keep making those strides and pushing forward and educating and empowering and having those conversations with people because the 74 million people who died deserve that from us.
They deserve us to go out and spread this message to let people know preventative measures, let people know that people living with HIV and AIDS are huggable and kissable and amazing human beings. We have to end the stigma because it's still out there. I am so incredibly overwhelmed with gratitude to be here today. Um, I never thought I would speak at a cathedral in drag, uh, but God works in mysterious ways. Uh, you know, it is a true honor, you know. A lot of times religion tells us to shun people, but in this, this house, like the Dean said, we welcome all people. And I encourage you to bring a friend or a neighbor to this space, a friend or a neighbor who may have their mind or their heart closed to people who aren't like them, a friend or a neighbor who may not understand what HIV or AIDS is. Bring them here, show them the quilts, tell them the stories, because we must never forget the 74 million lives who have been lost globally to this disease. Thank you for having me. Thank you.